Now, ladies and gentlemen, I'm not the one presenting this, so let me lock the screen onto who is presenting tonight, and let me introduce you to the host this evening, the real deal from the city of heavy metal and molten steel, teaching history as he makes it, never fakes it, look out, he dutifully deals deliverance to the anti-vaxxer crowd, chicks moaning for the PhD. I don't need no doctor, you say. We'll see. Better hope you're not in his area, mate. He'll lay down the Lincolnshire law. If he sees you breaking it, he'll tear you open with a can of claw. He's got a basing stoke alter ego too, but I can't see his name because the dickhead will sue. Public health has rarely been sexier, so please join me in a sophisticated beard stroke for the well-read Britain of our otherwise Teutonic Troika, Gareth! The cops were shit. Millward! <laughs> oh, Fred, you're too kind, but let's welcome the real star today. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls of all ages, please welcome at this time the insane in the membrane Dane, no pain, no gain, the joker smoker, who would kill you with a red hot poker, never knowingly undersold. With a build height of over two meters tall, do you have the gall to mess with the true bell of the open crowdsource ball? He made what's in the safe, but none of us will ever be safe. Welcome, the man, the legend, the interface system from Grim Fandango, Tank <laughs> Con Trolls Plymer! Woo! Woo! My man! That was fantastic! Thank you so much, Gareth. Can anyone hear me? I could hear Daft Punk. Oh, God. Uh, my internet providers decided that today is the day it's going to shit itself. So, um, yeah, have fun with that. You yeah. were going to do something else, weren't you? <laughs> Am I really? Yeah, you are. <laughs> I wouldn't lock the camera onto myself unless there was a reason for it. Hello, I boys and girls. Were... I thought you were just being narcissistic. This but anyway, is a, yeah, this is two hours of me. Welcome. <laughs> uh, but I, I would like to tell people who you are, if that's all right with you. Go ahead. Um, so, uh, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls of all ages, if you are able to hear my voice through the absolute shit of my internet connection, permit me to introduce the man, the myth, the legend of the buds in your ears and your small screen. He's lean, keen, and it took him 10 years to make a game, but he only needs the co coming hour to scar you for life. A talented writer, an epic <clears throat> trolls fighter, raging injustice fighter, but an all-round pleasant blighter. He's got sass and bile, but never enough to turn crass and vile, although, again, we'll see what happens in the coming hour or so. A gifted impersonator of voices, although Cedric and Virginia Capers remain too... He's got features so chiseled, if he gave you cunnilingus, he'd widen your gash by at least two centimeters. And yes, ladies, he's single, so come and get it. Give it up for my friend and hetero slash bi curious life mate, Frederick. Yeah, for you, feed me, yeah, boy, you land. Olsen! <laughs> <laughs> well, the parts I got were great. 
<laughs> what was that Danish phrase at the end, Trolls? You've got to translate that for us. Um, it was, uh, I'm from Funen, but I live in Jutland. Oh, in okay. a very strange accent. Yes. <laughs> well. Because he's got, he's got two of the dumbest accents we've got in Denmark. I do. In one, in one lovely marriage. Are you, are you a Scouse Brummie? Is that how it works? That's uh, kind of it, yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah, I suppose that's that that would be fairly accurate. Well, you know how this works, everybody. It's not just the three of us um, stroking each other's egos. No, that's that's something we do on our own time. Instead, we have another guest. So, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls of all ages, please welcome at this time a true legend of the gaming community. Full of laughter, even the morning after. He's been a judge for BAFTA. And you have to check out this journo inferno from whom we all could learn. Oh, writer of Sunless Sea and Fallen London. He's bringing ethics back. Yeah! You motherfuckers don't know how to act. You won't find this guy dead under a Leicester car park a few hundred years later. It's Richard of York. Kobe! Why, thank you, thank you, thank you. <laughs> Welcome, Richard. Welcome to the show. Hi, thank you. <laughs> very, very pleased to have you here, sir. I hope you can understand my daft punkishness. It's all right, it's just gone a bit craft work, but I'll, I'll try it. <laughs> I'm just trying to assume that everything you're saying, even if it doesn't make any sense, is at least funky. I, I would say you'd have to lip read, but even that's getting <laughs> fucked up as well, so. <laughs> only if you're only saying, uh. <laughs> So well, that's usually the face I make when everyone introduces guests anyway. But I really admire your trolls because I don't even know all the words to computer world. <laughs> Fuck off and die, you <laughs> bastard. I will at some point. Not just yet, but I will at some point. I will reach through the screen and bitch slap you. It's unlikely. And no one... Yeah, it's... Uh, yeah. On the okay. side, it's someone else take lag, it. They'll never see it coming. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> it'll happen like twenty minutes after the show. It's like the world's worst strobing effect. Really, I'll have, to, I'll have I'll have plenty of time to do a Keanu Reeves where I just <laughs> lean over to the side. You know, you know what's gonna happen. You know what's gonna happen after the show. You're gonna pack up. You're gonna put on your jacket. You're gonna go down for more beers. You're gonna close the door, lock the door, and then a fist jumps out the screen. <laughs> And just waves in the air. <laughs> well, we, as Richard um, told us uh, before the show, we're not here all night to get laggy. Instead, <laughs> we're here for a game, and we're here for a show, but not a game show. This is where four people sit down with each other and brainstorm the next blockbuster adventure game. And if you're listening to this as the head of a major label or as a struggling indie, you're free to take this idea and run with it, because after all... This is open crowdsource, baby. The rules are very simple. The open crowd... <laughs> the rules are simple. The open crowdsource machine will randomly select four cards containing a character, a setting, a task, and a modifier. And then we have 30 minutes to sketch out a full-length adventure game from whatever it gives us. Some of the cards are plucked from the classic adventure games and movies of yore, and some aren't. At some point during the proceedings, the faceless jerk of the game's producer will chime in with a twist that we all have to adhere to, and then we'll have to change our design accordingly. Twists come in two flavours, major and minor, and we can fully expect that jerk to throw one of each at us. At the end of the half hour, a buzzer will sound, and we'll recap what we've designed. We record each of these shows live, so people who are in the chat room, and there are a few of you at irc.freenode.net hash backseat designers. Hi, you can guys. also... Yes, hello. Uh, you can also follow us on Twitter, at BS Designers, and I'm getting a lot of chime from the uh, IRC uh, thing, so it looks like, uh, oh, they're just talking about murder ponies, of course they are. Yeah, um, so you can follow us on Twitter. Is, uh, Trolls is bitching yeah. about this ISP. <laughs> of course. Rightly so. <laughs> well, yes, yes. Well, fuckers. you can follow us on Twitter, at BS Designers, or you can send emails mm. to the Danish internet service providers and suggest plot points, additions, and most importantly all, the title for our masterwork. All right then, Richard, have you any idea what you've signed yourself up for? I, of course, have seen many, many episodes of this show. 
Uh, not, really? not, an, not an entire one, but the first five minutes of at least four. You, you, <laughs> li you lie with such charm. <laughs> So that means you've uh, you've just about seen uh, Josh Mandel getting his face licked and uh, and uh, David X Cohen uh, mumbling his way through uh, his own introduction. It, both defining moments in adventure game history. I know. I, know. <laughs> I like the way you think. We're very, very proud of both of them. <sighs> no, I should like, stop talking like, because everyone Josh goes so sense. badly licked. <laughs> no, I've not seen Josh get so badly licked since he was beaten up as King Graham. Hey. <laughs> oh snap! <laughs> or or when he was oiled up as that uh, that uh, uh, Persian guy standing in the background of King's Quest V. <laughs> oh, in King's Quest V, I was thinking about the video that, that we don't have got. That was King's Quest VI. He was oiled <laughs> up in King's Quest VI. But anyway, I no, wouldn't uh, know. Uh, by the, the way, the, just the, point in edge wise, King's Quest can go fuck itself. <laughs> Shots fired. Yeah, that Garrett, at least got a chuckle from someone. Gareth, do you want to carry on with the scripted introduction before Trolls' internet craps out again? Well, yeah, we've only got a couple of sentences left. Fred, <laughs> is the machine ready? The machine is more ready than Jimmy Savile in a Santa suit. Merry Christmas! You're going to be <laughs> fucking shit kidding <laughs> me. Let's just take a moment to... to Fred, uh, you... Incidentally, I want to throw that, uh, this out there. Uh, big props to uh, Lone, who uh, did the graphics, who, who did a special Christmas version. And big ups to uh, Thomas Ahn, who did the main theme and also did a special Christmas version, solely because I asked these people to. It's, <laughs> I, I should also probably point out that as the host of this show, you maybe should have told me this was going to happen. So yeah, didn't he didn't tell any of us. No, I shouldn't. I absolutely shouldn't have told you. Please, uh, please let's let's savor the moment. Uh, uh, please do notice Rudolph on on the third card from the. Uh, yeah. Left. He's got a machine gun. He's got two of them. What's, what's that up in the fucking in red the top, bastard? What's that up in the top left hand corner on the uh, the location card? Uh, top left hand corner on the. I think that is. Those are three I've, testicles having a laugh. They are. I'll go with that. I've I've actually been told what they are, but I'll I'll tell you after the fact. I don't remember right now. Okay. Well, I'm sure we'll put a screen grab of this up on the uh, blog post for those of you that aren't watching the YouTube and the visualness. Um, Fred, shall we just get on with this before we lose our entire evening? Yeah, let's do that. Are you before. guys ready? Here we yeah. go. Rudolph in Bethlehem, must overcome racial tensions and a partridge in a pear tree. <laughs> yes! Yes! And I well. swear I did not rig this game. <laughs> so uh, we've actually already established what Rudolph looks like, and he's fairly tired of, of taking your shit. Um, that's true, he did seem to have semi-automatic weapons. So the main point of this then is to what? Solve, to bring about world peace in the Middle East? Is that what we're saying? Well, I, I, do, I do like how this is about Rudolph overcoming racial tensions, because if you look at the lyrics of Rudolph the Red-Nosed Ranger, it's basically about bullying, and it's about picking on others because of stuff they can't help. So it, it makes a certain amount of sense for Rudolph to be a poster boy of everyone who's, you know, a, a minority, everyone who's different. You know what I'm going to do? I'm just going to waste more bandwidth looking up different uh, uh, subspecies and different uh, uh, types of reindeer just to see if there could be some interracial tension between reindeers. <laughs> I guess I sort of we've already got it between the red-nosed ones and the regular ones. Yeah, I guess I guess. Uh, oh, regular uh, ones, regular ones, Cobbett. regular ones, you fucking Nazi. <laughs> <laughs> I guess uh, I guess uh, guys like Bambi would be your old white power reindeer. Well, they did have a very bad upbringing. <laughs> <laughs> Growing up without a suitable moral source, having a Bible thumper kind of only a few feet away at all times. We're off to a smashing start here, ladies and gentlemen. You can't go wrong with Disney puns. Okay, so <laughs> we, th this is one of the few times actually where the cards haven't locked us to anything. I think we can do pretty much whatever we want here. So we've got Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer, who is in Bethlehem, which of course was the birthplace of uh, Jesus. 
Jesus. Overcoming racial tensions and a partridge in a pear tree. So have we got any idea of a general story that we can build around this and then try and flesh out? Well, I think the, the obvious thing is that obviously Rudolph is tied to Santa and it's really hard to be tense after you've just been given a wonderful present. So perhaps Rudolph will go around the world uh, delivering the kind of presents that just make people feel, feel good. Like, say he'll go over to where ISIS is based and just offer them all free massages. <laughs> um... <laughs> How, how does the reindeer get massages? Just like press its hooves against people's backs and spines. Just go, oh yeah, that's good. yeah. It's uh, yeah. Well, it's it's overrated, but yeah, that's basically what you get. Yeah, just release all of the tension in a series yeah. of careful gestures. Have you uh, ever that... have you ever had a genuine <laughs> reindeer massage? <laughs> I really like this idea because the main problem we we have, you know, we've got this guy up in his sleigh dropping presents. On innocent civilians. And a partridge in a pear tree. Yeah, but it's a partridge in a pear tree would be on the ground. So, so I was yeah. thinking the partridge in the pear tree could just be the final pass. And so that's what you use the machine guns for, because fuck partridges. So, but, yeah. um, but, for, but first you resolve racial tension uh, by handing out nice presents, and if some, someone is particularly you know, worked up, maybe they get bubble wrap. Uh, you know, they can kind of work their way through that. Uh, yeah, they get they obviously get uh, the ISIS massages kind of go without saying. Uh, you go down to a white power sort of group, but you hand out ice creams, you know, with um, uh, flakes in them, because then that brings everyone together. For everyone who is uh, listening to the audio version, Trolls has just shared a picture of what looks to be a relatively. So we, well, this is an alcoholic reindeer who. Dude, uh, this is literally... what happens. This is what happens when you mate a reindeer and a ferret. This is uh, your. <laughs> this is your reindeer on meth. Yeah, I'm. I'm looking up subspecies of reindeer just to uh, just to give this some sort of scientific context. So Dasher, Meth, Prancer. <laughs> meth, not <laughs> even one. Prancer, um, uh, that dude from uh, uh, Breaking Bad, and uh, what's the other one? Well, maybe, oh. maybe the, uh, maybe the. <laughs> I, I like the idea. I like where Richard is going. The partridge is. Well, you said final boss, but but. Well, uh, what I was thinking is, is that it turns out that that twist that the partridge is actually the mastermind, uh, who is sort of sitting above everyone else, looking down upon the world and sowing yeah. discord in the form of golden rings that it throws out of its tree. The cosmic partridge and the cosmic pear tree. I don't, is, I don't there, is there any way that a partridge could resemble Donald Trump and or Adolf Hitler? Yes, it could be very very ugly. <laughs> I'll buy that for a dollar. Okay, hold on. Uh, I do have to uh, interject that uh, uh, on the IRC channel, people are saying that all they see is Fred and his amazing face. Oh, his oh amazing uh, Conolingus face. Uh, I'll, uh, I'll click better. I think it's better. Is it? Well, I've, you know, I don't see how you could possibly uh, <laughs> see it as see it as a drawback to have my Conolingus face plastered all over your screen. Or, ah, but uh, there you go. <laughs> Did you just do a tongue exercise? That's that's brutal. Okay. <laughs> okay. So, okay. If the if the partridge you said the partridge is throwing down his golden rings and he's the final boss. So are we going to work our way through the 12 days of Christmas, each of them having some kind of racial tension overtones? No, that's only the boss rush at the end, uh, in okay. which he throws down his ring, so that gets the ten lords leaping, the eight maids are milking. They milk so hard they can't do anything else. Their hands are raw. They start bleeding. They scream for the release of death, but he won't give it to them because the partridge only looks down and wants more. <laughs> <laughs> that's what I was thinking. That's poetry. I was thinking we could also have a platform game mini... Uh, uh, arcade section before that, but certainly the partridge definitely is the evil figure. And I was thinking, kind of, kind of maybe kind of structurally before then, uh, maybe like uh, Dr. Drago's Wild Chase, Come San Diego, Mario's Missing sort of type thing. So you literally have the entire world at your disposal, with the adventure game element coming in sort of, uh, maybe you, as Rudolph you only have your, your resources, only a certain amount of time, uh, only a certain amount of money to buy things. You've got to travel around the world finding all the different items which you can use to reduce the tension, then taking them to where they need to be. And if you could arrest Carl uh, San Diego, you get bonus points. Trolls is uh, sharing a picture of a partridge for those of you listening to the audio. And apparently the partridge, has, face. the partridge has a rusty face, which as far as I know, it's, a, it's not a euphemism, but it's pretty damn close. 
And it's also got a dark U-shaped splotch on its belly because it's unable to wipe itself after going to the loo. It's also um, got grayish legs. And, and, uh, and boy, how do don't and we it's all? It's going to isn't attached to its body. <laughs> so uh, from, from this uh, diagram, studying this diagram, where does the evil emanate and uh, how do you go about killing it? Do what you do in shaped splotch on its belly how to reveal a uh, slightly more pulsating... Well, obviously the splotch in its belly is the shoot here like that we all know from kind of regular arcade games. Yeah. Now, we don't want to take yeah, too far... We, 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 don't, we, don't, we don't want to take too far in this direction because obviously adventure gamers sort of tend to really, really hate you know, action sequences. Mm. So it has to be more kind of strategic kind of battle. Um, then obviously it'll be flying around. You've got to find some way of slowing it down. You have to clip its wings uh, to maybe kind of lure it with a big plate of bird seed, you know, like in the old Roadrunner cartoons. Uh, and only then can you actually deliver the coup de grace. Uh, but it has to be a sort of like you know Monkey Island sort of style sequence where you you set up the kill, you know piece by piece by piece before finally throwing it away and then feather. having a, and then hmm. and then having a really disappointing ending. <laughs> and then and you know the the music in the very end scene is you the the last scene is that you see a feather dropping across the screen and you hear you know kind of like with a reverb onto it. And a portrait <laughs> and a No, 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 no. Whoa, whoa, whoa. no you're, you're, you're not, you're not the getting into the, so you're not getting into the evil Sorry. partridge. You would have exactly that, but it would be the feather would float to the ground, and it'd be a bit like bayonetta and a partridge in hell. <laughs> <laughs> I, w I was going for a different stylistic approach. I was going for the feather silently uh, uh, tilting towards the ground, and then. Uh, uh, a person in a hood walks over, picks it up, and goes, "Oh, the last leaf of the spring, or something." <laughs> and then he walks off and uh, uh, picks up no, a staff goes, and goes on adventures. Yeah, and, the oh. last, the last leaf of autumn. I wonder <laughs> what the elders are talking about. <laughs> Roll <Rock> credits. <laughs> it is as it was prophesized. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I, I read an article today that said that uh, Loom was the uh, LucasArts adventure that had aged the most well. That's hardly even a sentence, but uh, it's the... Uh, also, it's game. hardly relevant considering we have 20 oh, and a half oh, no, minutes no, 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 to go. No, 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 no. It, it, it bears relevance because what I think we should do is uh, uh, do this game with, uh, you know, the action sequences and the uh, uh, adventuring and all this uh, phenomenal fast-paced action all in glorious EGA 16 colors. Right. Bethlehem in, in EGA, I can definitely buy that. Definitely. Well, at, least, at least it's got yellow, because if we tried to do it in CGA, then it would basically be Bethlehem in the middle of a nuclear winter. <laughs> <laughs> I actually like the idea of going CGA because, you know, I've, I've, oh. I've said this many, many times, you know, fuck people who think that uh, adventure games are bound to the past, that it's only about retro. You know, let's give you retro. CGA for the win. We could just get um, everyone to dress and just punch them in the face. It'd be quicker. <laughs> we could do that, surely. If I, if I could do that, I would. I certainly would. No, I spent far too long kind of being lumbered with CGA. The, the fantastic graphics adapter where everything would look like either moss growing on a stone or the aforementioned nuclear wasteland in a magenta sewn hell. Um, I don't see why you couldn't be satisfied <laughs> with that, though. I, I still had CGA until about 1991. <laughs> Ouch. Okay, so I can see you have a, a particular sort of uh, uh, affiliation or affinity, or what's the opposite word of affinity with Inten CGA? Intense, rooted hatred and disgust. That would be it. I yeah, was looking for a single word, but I will take a rudimentary antipathy. hatred. If Troll oh, tries to antipathy. say that, his ruder will break. <laughs> <laughs> Too many syllables <laughs> powering down. Um, so okay, I do, like, I, do uh, I do yeah. like some of the things that have come out though because I mean if we're going to do this in EGA but have this open world where you can travel the entire world oh, dropping Bethlehem. presents and finding Carmen San Diego and all this other kind of stuff only, only to you have, have time you yeah, the, the mission have, the mission has to come first okay <laughs> well there we go side missions I mean these are all sort of modern things that have come in because apparently you need 300 hours of gameplay Maybe so, yeah, you have can... to. Maybe you have to. You have to make moral choices. We talked about Mass Effect before we got on the air, and I guess you could. Does Rudolph deliver the present to Jimmy Savile, or does he simply skip him? See, I'm 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 wondering if uh, um, Richard 
Ed's new gig over at um, whatever it's at space, uh, uh, writing about art. Yeah, that, that thing. Uh, writing about RPG games may have sort of colored his uh, approach to the situation because I'm sensing a lot of... Uh, someone was mentioning side quests and we're getting into sort of open world territory. I'm thinking this does not have so much to do with adventure games oh, as it does... No. Uh, well, well, speaking as AdventureGamers.com's forum's second favorite reviewer after John Walker, uh, <laughs> I, would, I would say that I'm really kind of more inspired by things like the, the, the ones which would give you a certain amount of free mechanism it's kind of the uh, natural extension, say, the three trial system from Monkey Island. Um, it's the ex uh, extrapolation, like, you know, say, Full Throttle, where you have the open road, Space Quest Five, where you have a ship. And it's a bit more kind of, you know, orchestrated. But I, I always love that element of freedom in these games. And I yes. think that what, what you, if you have the world as your stage, then within the individual sections, you have the adventure game puzzles. You know, like, you know, how, what do you do in a particular situation? Mm. How do you give the bubble wrap to Osama? I mean, that's going to be a fairly <laughs> difficult thing. But firstly, you have to find a way of infiltrating his, his facility. And I was thinking that could be played out like something like, say, the thief modes in Quest for Glory 2. And then, of course, when you actually get in there, you have the additional problem that he's dead. And so you have to go around kind of making a voodoo doll so you can kind of bring him back um, just to give him his presence. And I, I think that all of these allows for a nice sort of sense of both player freedom, but also the kind of deep, intense, you know, adventure gaming puzzles that we all grew up loving. And also some of the ones by Roberta Williams. Also. <laughs> so I, 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 I do think... Coveted. <laughs> I, I know, I know, I, but I'm also sensing sort of a Dickensian theme here because we are dealing with the past, present, and future ghosts of adventure gaming. It's uh, it's kind of it's kind of got everything under the sun, and then and then a pack of biscuits on the left. <laughs> but think, but think about it. It's actually very in keeping with recent with recent games. Just look at Mobius, where an entire section of the game involved having to fly all the way across the country just to get somebody a bottle of wine. This is oh, no different. Yeah, yeah. I remember that. I do, I do like the concept of having an open-world ad, uh, adventure game in the sort of sense that uh, you, you might be playing Fallout or Undertale, but uh, it's got adventure game elements. It doesn't have the RPG fighting style. Uh, exactly. Kind of like what, kind of like but, what but I enjoyed about Lisa Suit Larry 6 and 7, which is that it does have an open world that you can explore, and you can basically visit any location that you want to. You just have to sort of solve puzzles in a semi-linear fashion. I, I, w I would point to Zach McCracken, only we do it good. Oh, good one. Oh, do, you, do you mean the original or the German uh, botched attempt at a sequel? Uh, my German is too bad to have, to have played that one. Um, I definitely it's don't mean. I definitely don't mean the one which just used art of fighting backgrounds and kind of pretended it was uh, doing the adventure game thing. Oh, not that one. Uh, the, the the German one is absolutely uh, breathtaking looking. Uh, but how is this relevant? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I don't know. The clock just went off. It's, it's, it's not 15 minutes left relevant. Okay, <laughs> sorry. I'm, I was looking up a, a screen. No, uh, no, or, no, I mean, just, just say sorry. Don't go on. Just say sorry. Don't go on. I, okay, I'm just going to say, I was looking up no, 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 Can no, someone, no, hey, can oh, someone oh, oh, have, oh, oh, have oh, 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 will you hey, oh, fuck oh, off and oh, die oh, already? Children. 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 Anyway, Richard has something gonna, to say. Yeah. <laughs> I was, I was, I'm just waiting to see the thing. <laughs> I was going to ask you a question because it seems like we've moved away from the location that the cars dealt, it, dealt us because we're on to Rudolph going around the world. And um, where does Bethlehem enter? Is that simply the location where you start or are we actually going to do something with the unrest that has unfortunately. Well, what, what I would say is, he, is, is, he want, is he want to kind of do the big ones later on. So kind of it's a bit like kind of a platform game. You start off oh, with the have a twist. <laughs> oh dear God. We're getting Error. protests from the PC police. <laughs> Change all Christmassy things to generic winter holiday stuff. I guess that's where trolls uh, meth reindeer uh, enters. <laughs> <laughs> So it's not Rudolph the rain, uh, red nosed reindeer. It's just Randolph the meth head reindeer. It's uh, yeah. It's it's Brian the nondescript reindeer. Hmm. On meth. The and ethical blue. reindeer. Uh, so, sorry, Mr. Cobbett, you yes. were saying. I was saying, I was saying that you you wouldn't want to go straight to trying to solve the problems in the Middle East. That would be crazy. You want to sort of start small and work your way up there. A bit like how in the platform games you always start in like the Green Hill Zone type thing, and then the desert's not until like level two or three at least. So what you want to go is to sort of start off by maybe going to sort out a minor scuffle in Basingstoke, 
and then after a few hours of, kind of, <laughs> of getting everything together, you then find yourself in the Middle East, and then, you know, where do we go from here? Maybe invite everybody to um, uh, the, uh, uh, the stable in Bethlehem, and except that this time you hand out food so everyone can kind of get into, well, we don't have to believe in this, we don't have to accept as holy truth, but these pigs in a blanket are delicious. <laughs> That's very epic. Okay. I'm, I'm, I'm sorry, my, it, it might just be my connection fucking up, or maybe it was because I was just looking up pictures of reindeer, but can someone recap what the premise of this game is? Because I'm lost as all hell. <laughs> yes, I think Richard, I think Richard, Richard you're the guest, standard. so um, you, you recap for us what the game is as you see it at this point. Very good. It's basically, you play uh, was it Randall, the, uh, non, the non-specific reindeer, uh, on a general holiday quest uh, to solve racial tensions uh, around the world, but also ultimately in the Middle East by traveling around the world and finding all of the items and then delivering them to the people in order to sort of generally sort of lower the general sort of state of the world's um, uppertiness uh, before finally discovering that all evil in the world is the result of a partridge of the pear tree, holding, throwing out basically the rings of power from Lord of the Rings and as a result making Lords Leap and Maid's Milk and all of the other horrors of the season. The non-specific <laughs> season, of course, yeah. since we're no longer doing Christmas. Uh, in this, in, since we're trying to wind it up, it could also then have a full-on boss rush, where as you travel around the world, you first got to deal with all of the other figures of the holidays. So first, you take out the Easter Bunny, who's hopping around the place and, and hiding eggs of discord wherever he goes. Uh, you could have, you know, the evil, um, I don't know. A, a, a dodgy Hanukkah candle system, which is sort of slowly sort of burning things. You've got to sort of remind that's not what it's meant to do. It's actually committing a hate crime, and at which point it apologizes <laughs> and goes back to its regular place on the table. Uh, and, then, and, then, and, then, and then, and then, and then, of course, for our, Ameri- for our American players, we then have the evil turkey, which is sick of being stuffed. Uh, and has gone around trying to poison people by overfeeding by overfeeding them with itself. A very, <laughs> very horrible figure. And when you've defeated these four evil knights of the Christmas season, then everyone will, will realise, in fact, all religion is could maybe be used to bring people together if we all accept that it's really just about making people act a bit better to each other, and then the credits roll. And then there's a sequel hook where we find out the pigeon has gone, so the uh, partridge has gone to hell, uh, and then in the sequel, Satan Claus returns. Oh, I like I what, think we just stopped the timer question, right there. Yeah, one, one, one question, though, and I do want to interject. One. <laughs> but one question. Well, one, really. now I, and now I don't actually remember it. <laughs> I had I had one question, but you completely stumped me. And in, in actuality, I thought my question was pretty brilliant. But well, I'll, pro- I'll probably remember it. Fuck it. Sometime. I'll, I'll take over tomorrow. I'll take over uh, because uh, we do want to get into the actual meat of the game. We've got an excellent premise. We've got a reindeer going around the world trying to solve the world's problems, um, eventually figuring out that all religion is based on superstitious nonsense and we should all just be nice to each other. And then it turns out a partridge sitting in a pear tree somewhere is just being a fuck-off idiot to everyone. Mm. Now... My question becomes, uh, because we're dealing with an open world situation, we can ostensibly go to every part of the world uh, at our leisure. So uh, uh, is it is it kind of like the select screen in Mega Man games? Are you like, it's just going, I am going to go to Turkey right now, because that's well, where I'll find no, the uh, Turkey. No, a- actually, it's about ethics and game shows. Oh, boom. <laughs> <laughs> well, that, sure, in this case, that just means that you agree to fly everywhere, but then you also take them copies of Dead or Alive Extreme or something. I've, I've kind of forgotten what the latest scandal is. I know it's involved boobs, <laughs> but... But yeah, oh, oh, the, like, the latest scandal is, is that Bayonetta can't be in a fighting game because apparently she's too delicate. I actually, I actually, I think that it's a really uh, definite thing that Bayonetta shouldn't be allowed in Smash, and that's because she is so powerful that even if you had one team specifically called "Let's Beat Up Bayonetta" and she had her arms tied behind her back and was wearing concrete shoes, she would still stomp them. But that <laughs> is beside the point. No, I, I was thinking. I was thinking. I was thinking mechanically wise. We've got an open world view. We're kind of like a map, yeah. Um, mm-hmm. And it's sort of like Zach McCracken in that each of the individual areas is sort of like they've got their puzzles. They've got their own characters. 
you can uh, fly around them more or less at will once you've unlocked the reason to go there. So kind of fairly sort of standard uh, thing there. And then stuff which you do in one can obviously then be sort of taken to another one. Um, it might affect things uh, in one place to take them to another one. Um, and then sort of slowly you kind of you work around. So basically the map is, is lovely and warm and everyone is really getting on. And then boss fight. Oh, I, I, I quite like this idea. So basically you've got a, um, you know, like Melonweed in Full Throttle, you've got this overhead map, you've got a number of screens that you can visit, there's a number of sub-screens at every uh, uh, area that you visit, and then by the end of it you've basically, uh, you know, conquered the map, so to speak, but conquered mm. it with love, obviously, and moves. Uh, and then and then at some point, uh, like in the middle of the map, you, you, I mean, you gather all this information at these different nodes around the map, and the middle of the map unlocks, and there's the partridge in the fucking pear tree, right in the middle of the Sahara Desert. It's, it's, they're sitting in the Atlantic Accelerator from Syndicate, and it's been watching <laughs> you all along. And in fact, as you, as you go her. around, it keeps on sabot it keeps on sort of sabotaging your good works. So, for example, you'll go to um, I don't know a small town which has a minor problem, like let's say, for example, graffiti. And so you go there, and by using puzzles of the kind, which obviously are inspired very much by the King's Quest style, you build them a small but functional youth centre and organise its funding with the local government, therefore get <laughs> it off the street and, a, and able to sort of find something more worthwhile to do with their time. But then when you get back, the party just set fire to it. <laughs> I love how can, and I remember my question from earlier, can the party speed... Speak in the voice of Cedric the Owl. No! I see no reason why not. No, oh, God, no. Watch out, Crab! A poisonous philosophy! I am in Watch your Watch out, a fist is moving through bed. very slowly. <laughs> fucking up your shit! <laughs> My question concerns the turkey that overfeeds itself to other people. I want to see how, how this the game works. I also had a question for that. This was also a question I had earlier while you were completely owning us. But when you, in Dragon Ball Z, they have fusion, right? You have several powerful warriors fusing to create a new one. Could you have a turkey and a chicken and a duck fusing up as the evil Lord Turducken of all hell? Do you mean biologically? So I don't think that's how it <laughs> Well, I don't know how the Americans do it. I'm going to say I, that would be a very disturbing transformation. Surely one that would have to go all the way up to you know, the other one. Oh, well, I would, I, mean, I would I mean, dearly I, love to see yeah. that. I mean, you go, you go to, the, you go to North America, and you visit. Uh, uh, maybe, maybe there are like three places in the North American node, and uh, one of them's got a turkey, one of them's got a chicken, one of them's got whatever the hell. And uh, and uh, and at some point, when you solve all the puzzles, uh, um. You know, let, let's let, let's say let's say that there's a there's a turkey terrorizing the Midwest, and there's a chicken terrorizing uh, um, New York, and there's a, what what's the last animal? Sorry, a tur uh, it's, it's a, a duck. duck. It's a duck, yeah. obviously. Clues um, in the name, bait. <laughs> and and once you solve the puzzle, all the all the fowl just run away, and then the final. Uh, you know the the boss fight of that node is the turd duck, and they all just run and they meet up somewhere in Maine and uh, you know hide out in the forest, and then you go there and then you uh, uh, defeat it with. You get a lovely little because you know of course the tradition of the turd duck involves stuffing various birds up their respective asses. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. yeah. It's, 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 you get like this lovely little cutscene of the duck going, <laughs> "All right, lads, I'm going in." <laughs> <laughs> oh, and uh, by the way, over in the RSC channel, our uh, good friend uh, Michael Council has the tagline for this game, or at least that section of the game. It's time for stuffing. <laughs> <laughs> we will stop your foul scheme. <laughs> oh. Dear God, don't make me spew beer. <laughs> <laughs> Rudolf goes in with his twin machine gun, like, I feel like chicken tonight. <laughs> 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 what I love about this so far is that Hallelujah, coaching. <laughs> we had virtually no guidelines for this one, and this is the most fleshed out in terms of plot puzzles, <laughs> game and mechanics, in, and, in, and in terms of poultry meat. Mm -hmm. ba basically, basically, it all revolves around us just leaning back and just watching Richard fly with it. You know, no pun yeah. intended. Richard, Ray, I, I get a feeling that and uh, Richard, you already said before we went on the air that you've been doing quite a little bit of game design work. Well, I, think, I, 
I think you should generally consider making room for this in your uh, admittedly <laughs> busy schedule. <laughs> Then again, he might have uh, you know endeavors that actually merit his attention. I don't know. I'm just no, I, I, I think I, 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 I've got to say I wouldn't be interested in doing such a horrible you know SJW kind of game. Uh -oh. I would have to kind of go with the <laughs> real game of choice. It would have to be Rudolph the Half Red Red Reindeer. Gareth, over to you. Uh, we we have a problem with this game. <laughs> <laughs> in hindsight, one week isn't enough time to make a full game. Only used three rooms. Well, All right, there, I got goes, it. there goes open world. In, 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 instead of Rudolph specifically visiting things, you now also takes place in his uh, secret command center. So all we've got is a really big map, yeah, from which he assigns his minions. Because oh. obviously the other reindeer have now realized that he is the best because he has the red nose. And so, so you, you, you dispatch them on missions around the world. And so, so now, you, now all we need is uh, that room. Uh, we need kind of the battle room where you can sort of fight the giant Tadukan of Doom, uh, and then of course the, the final, uh, the final screen where he takes out the partridge. Can we please include the line, gentlemen? You can't find the giant Tadukan of Doom. This is the war room. <laughs> you rimshot. You want the kitchen? <laughs> Okay, this does put kind of a crimp on the uh, on, on the situation. Not that the map room idea is not a good one, but I was really, really hoping for... Uh, I was really sold on the whole open world kind of thing, where you would go around and you would have multiple screens at each uh, node, and each uh, part of the uh, of the map would be yeah. like we, several we, different we uh, harness, areas to visit. We shall harness the greatest processor in the world, the human brain. And now the entire thing can just be done with storylets. So we don't actually have to create all of those worlds. We merely have to have the text descriptions there. And it sort of turns into like mini kind of sort of twine tutor and adventure uh, thing around the world. So we want to but, do but a text nicely adventure? Wrapped. Yeah. Yes, but nicely wrapped so it looks modern. <laughs> <laughs> that's I like what that. they, well, that's what they tried to do with text adventures back in the day. Ah, but now if you look at something like 80 Days, it's working. Yeah, or uh, you know, eighty days, sun, sea, source three. You know, people are falling for it now. So you know, <laughs> it, it, it's not it's not the era of Zork Zero, whichever one of those was sort of trying to do the same thing. Um, we we can totally get away with this. So each each uh, node pops up. You have these sort of little sort of ch mini sort of choose your own adventures where you as Rudolph play the great puppet master of his uh, reindeer army. And even if we did the most half-assed, basic, simplistic job it would still be three times as good as the same thing in Dragon Age Inquisition. Cheers to that. <laughs> yeah, cheers to that. Okay, so with 30 seconds, uh, less than 30 seconds to go, uh, the end game with you at the command center, uh, 20 seconds to go, how does that play out? Well, that one is obviously that Rudolph, or say, uh, uh, whatever we're calling him, um, decides now it's time to take personal action. So he kicks down the door, and he flies across there in a short but very well-executed cutscene, and then it's just kind of this big action sequence, like the end of Gabriel Knight 3, in which he takes it out while still re retaining some kind of some vague tradition of his adventure game origins. That was, uh, that was Jimmy Savile falling down the <laughs> <laughs> that was amazing, I, and I mean you the brainstorming right. session, not necessarily yeah. Jim and Savile. Well, I, I, yeah, I think we, sh I think we should give credit where credit is due and say that Richard was amazing. And this is usually the part where we ask you uh, to recap again. But frankly, I'm, <laughs> frankly, I'm not sure we can do that just quietly. <laughs> I, I have, I have no idea. <laughs> what? I have no idea what we just made, and and uh, the fact remains. I'll go back to this. We made show. art. I'll go. <laughs> I'll go back to this show a year later and still not fully comprehend what we made. Maybe on my deathbed, I'll you know launch into a smirk as life <laughs> it leaves me, and I'll suddenly realize that what we did here was. It was something that's got us one step closer to comprehending the meaning of life. You know, you know what's going to happen. I'm going to go off and uh, then watch this stream again, and then actually realize what, what you guys were saying because my internet is complete shit. So I got about half the design document in my head. One more time, we're gonna <laughs> celebrate. <laughs> 
I like the merch merchandise possibilities of this game because I think the partridge and the Tadukan of Doom mm. are clearly play sets. You could have you could have your own Tadukan of Doom spin-off. You know, well, let's, 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 let's the nice thing about the Tadukan is you sell one thing when you can sell three. Exactly. Oh, yeah, exactly. I, 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 I just love this idea of a giant... Actually, you could make a decent platformer. You could do a great platform. And I know I'm designing now, but I'm technically not designing something that's part of the game itself, so fuck the rules. <laughs> and you could have this great Third Duggan of Doom platformer spin-off, like a Duke Nukem 2 kind of thing, where you have, you have three lives where you're, you're, you're playing as the third Duggan of Doom and you're shooting shit, and then as the enemies hit you, the outer bird is gradually stripped away, and then you, you know... The like, kind of like Ghosts and Goblins. You kind of just end up with a sad turkey in the middle, kind of looking kind of pathetic and naked. Yeah, exactly, exactly. <laughs> you start out with the third duck, and then they shoot, oh shit, turkey's done, it's the duckin. Then the duck is going at it with a chicken up its ass. Then the uh, the duck is shot away, and finally it's the chicken being left. I don't actually <laughs> know if I don't know actually if that's the order uh, in which the Americans stuff animals up their respective asses. But there you have it. Here, here, uh, 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 I was thinking it could be kind of like there was a Double Dragon 3, uh, the Rosetta Stones, um, where basically the idea was that, that as each character died, they were replaced by another one. So in this case, we could have exactly the same thing. So first comes the turkey, then comes the duck, then comes the chicken. It would work exactly as in the original game, because it wouldn't be Double Dragon, it would be Triple Chicken. <laughs> <laughs> also, I, ju I just want to interject that, that uh, you know, Franbo had an excellent platforming sequence right in the middle of everything. Uh, there is no reason why you couldn't have a little jumpy jumpy uh, just to get close to uh, the actual uh, third duck in itself. I always did enjoy a bit of jumpy jumpy. <laughs> I know you do. Well, I think I think the IRC channel has seen quite enough of your O face tonight, uh, Fred. You've been uh, very excitable. <laughs> there we go. Um, I'm just an excitable boy. I wish my internet connection was better because this is one episode I would have enjoyed to just go speed. I mean, people would have to. To, you know, slow down the stream just to hear us spitballing uh, ideas back and forth. We're all our, we're all about to get lucky. Oh, please, please, m m Mr. Cobbett, please do us the honor of rejoining us in season three. I, I would, would dearly love, love that. I would love to. Yes. Thank you. Thank please you so much. Do. Well, on that ironic lag, that's it for Open Fuck Crowdsource off. for this episode. <laughs> Before we go, a big thank you again to Michael Consul, who was in the uh, chat room today and has very generously donated to the uh, Backseat Designers Patreon Fund. Thank you, Michael. Uh, thank you, Mike. And, also uh, known as Fred's Christmas Preston. <laughs> I was going to say, all, all I heard there was <laughs> really bad uh, auto-tune Europop. Um, there is no episode next week. This is the last one of the series. Uh, but I'm sure we will be back in due course. Uh, we, should, we, we, should, a... we should give our, uh, because you know, Thanksgiving just uh, came about and now it's Christmas, we should give our thanks to every single guest who's ever been on the show ever, Yes. Um, including Francisco Gonzalez. This is where we would roll like a montage sequence with blurry edges in slow motion, but we don't actually have the bu Actually, we have the budget for it, but we can't be asked to do it. <laughs> Okay, let, let, just, me, let me just... Let me just, just, uh... just picture it. It'd be beautiful. But thank you to each and every one of you who watched this and who uh, joined us on this. Thank you. Yes, thank, thank you, you to you. Chris Pope, Jacob Janirka, <laughs> Joe Mastriani, Bianca Devins, Francisco Gonzalez, Da Oosh, and... <laughs> David X. Newton, Ryan Dude, David Devon, Sean Mills, Jess Morissette, Serena Nelson, Josh Mandel, Diana Rose, and Natalie Rizulka Yuhash. Thank you. And, and Richard Carpet. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> also, that dude, also the dude who's in the stream right now. <laughs> thank you, Richard. Why, thank you. Here. Yes, thank you. <laughs> thank you, the two polite people of the stream. <laughs> so to Hello. all yes, of our esteemed guests, many, but many more arguments with you on Twitter. Shout out, Trey. So thank you to thank all you. of our esteemed guests, especially to Richard. Richard, have you got anything that you'd like to plug? 
Ah, uh, eh, I don't know. Uh, come visit my website, richardcobbett.com. Uh, visit my YouTube channel. Can never remember what it is. Follow us from the, my main link. Uh, if you like the stuff that I write and the stupid videos I make, feel free to throw me some quid via Patreon. If you don't, I'm sorry. I'll try and do better. <laughs> you can't. You can't <laughs> argue with that. So. <laughs> You can find the show and all of the details on BackseatDesigners.com. Uh, if you enjoy this show, you can download the home edition of the Open Crowdsource Machine to play the game at home yourself. Uh, and, of course, on there you'll find our Twitter, our Facebook, our YouTube, and, most importantly, all the links so that you can subscribe to the show. Uh, we will be back in the new year at some point with a, uh, a traditional sort of uh, Backseat Designers series. I'm not sure whether I'll be there, but I hoping that I'll be there for a couple of them, maybe all of them. He's kind we'll of on the it. fence. He's, he's, he's yeah. not sure if he likes us yet. Well, Gareth you know. Is, I mean, Gareth is not sure if he's backseat designer curious, curious or if he's full-on backseat designer, and we're trying I, I, to sway him over. I, I would oh, prefer I to be a backseat backseat designer. <laughs> So I can just do the snipe from the sidelines. We're the backseat designers. You're the loo provider. <laughs> so just before we go, we have had a bit of feedback uh, on the Twitter. This is from uh, Emma Millward, who says, does anyone else ever put in earbuds without music just so that they don't have to listen to their husband record a lame podcast? Well, <laughs> I have no idea, Emma, but your husband sounds amazing. <laughs> <laughs> Say goodbye, Fred. Goodbye, and happy holidays to all of you. Say goodbye, trolls. Goodbye. <laughs> and it's goodbye from me. We will see you on the chrono screen. Time jockeys. Woo! <laughs>